Hungarian folk tales. The discontented cooking pot. The cooking pot was bored with boiling and bubbling all day. So he began to complain to the walking stick. Oh, I can't bear to stay here anymore. I too long to leave this place, replied the walking stick. So let us set out together, my friend. Yes, let's, for the journey is always more pleasant when one has company. The pot and the walking stick set out to see the world. Neither of them was terribly clever. The pot, as of course you know, was empty inside, and the walking stick was hardly famous for his wit. At first, however, things looked promising, for when the pot was almost trampled on the path by the angry bull, the walking stick leapt up and began to whack the bull soundly on its backside. And while the walking stick was walloping the bull, the pot jumped into the river. Swim, swim, shouted the walking stick, I'll catch up with you soon. The walking stick soon grew bored with whacking the bull, so he too jumped into the water. He thumped his nose at the bull, who bellowed from the bank, but was unable to follow him. At the end of the village, the walking stick came across a pack of stray dogs. And when the dogs attacked, the cooking pot shouted, Whack them! Whack them, my friend! And the stick gave the dogs a sound beating. And as they continued on their way, they came across the terrible monster of the mines. The monster of the mines was terrified, for he had never seen a pot and a walking stick out for a stroll all on their own before. Horrors, what a fright! I'll grab my bag and take flight! And the monster of the mines fled and took shelter in the hollows of the cliff. And as he ran so quickly, he failed to notice that there was a hole in his bag and glittering gold coins were falling on the ground. But the pot and the walking stick noticed. Come, come, let's gather them up. The walking stick neither dillied nor dallied. He gathered up the coins and put them into the pot. The pot was brimming with gold. No one would have dared to call him empty-headed anymore. How fortunate we've been, they said to each other. And they began to weave the most elaborate plans, visions of wealth and grandeur for their future together. The pot thought to himself, I shall find someone who will wrap me in wire and make me immortal. They will cover me with wire, strong wire, all over, that I may never crack or break. And once I have ensured my immortality, I will ensure myself a life of leisure and comfort. I will bribe the cook to make sure I am always brimming over with stuffed cabbage. For the pot simply adored stuffed cabbage. Then the walking stick's vanity also rose to the fore. From now on, I will be a great lord, and after I have split the riches with my friend, I will find a skilled blacksmith and have a golden button made for my head. But then again, he thought after a moment, if I had all the gold we found to myself, I wouldn't have to content myself with a mere button. I could have my entire head covered in gold. Heavens, it would be simply splendid. I would be the most beautiful walking stick in the country. Maybe even the king would notice. Perhaps he would even want me to be his scepter. Or why should I not have all the gold? For am I not the stronger one? His head was teeming with cruel and murderous thoughts. And when the pot lay down his head to sleep at night, the walking stick snuck over to his side and delivered him a single lethal whack. And thus the pot's good fortune turned out to be deadly misfortune. The poor pot shattered fragments, clattered, clacked and cried out, Murderer! Murderer! But the walking stick barely noticed his cries. 
and he stuffed the golden coins in a sack and set off to find a blacksmith. God's blessings on you, good blacksmith. What have you bought me, honourable walking stick? A sack full of golden coins, blacksmith. Where did you get that, you rascal? I found it by the side of the road, said the walking stick, feigning a look of innocence. And what do you plan to do with all that money? You are but a mere walking stick. Good blacksmith, make me a golden knob for my head. The blacksmith took the golden coins, melted them, shaped them into a lovely knob, and soldered it on to the walking stick's head. There you are, he said to the walking stick. You may now set out to find yourself a wife. But his golden head, itself the fruit of his cruel act, would bring him no joy, only misfortune. His path took him deep into the forest, and Black Jack, the infamous bandit, spotted him. And the brigand spoke, the knob on that walking stick is made of gold, if I am not mistaken. Look, Matty, how shiny it is. Let's chase him down, grab him and take his golden knob. Stop, stop, they cried. But naturally the walking stick did not stop, but ran from the bandits. He was gasping for breath when he reached the top of the high hill, and the bandits were still hot behind him. At the bottom of the tremendous chasm gaping below him flowed the waters of the mighty river. The walking stick had little choice but to jump into the waters below. He tried to summon his courage. I am, after all, a walking stick. I can swim. I am made of wood. I will reach the far bank. I am, after all, a walking stick. I can swim. I am made of wood. I will reach the far bank. And so he jumped into the waters. But lo, soon the waves were splashing over his head. He sank to the bottom, never again to rise to the surface. For the golden knob, the spoils of a cruel misdeed, pulled him into the depths, down, 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 to a watery grave.